unstable isotopes, they decay to become more stable. Make sure you're subbed up to Gorilla Physics because at Gorilla Physics I aim to teach you the Grade 9 material. In this video I'm going to tell you everything you need to know to master the idea of nuclear stability and why radioactive nuclei decay. An unstable isotope decays to become more stable. I'm going to talk you through atomic structure and especially why things are or are not stable. You're going to know all the stuff about how we describe nuclei. These are some things that you should know already before you start this video. Firstly, what's the conclusion of Rutherford's alpha particle scattering experiment? Most of the mass is concentrated in the nucleus and that that nucleus has a positive charge. In fact, the nucleus is 10,000 times smaller than the atom. Incredible conclusions. You should know the two particles in the nucleus of an atom, that's the proton and the neutron. A proton's a positive particle, a neutron is a neutral particle. And you should be able to state the charge on an electron, which is minus one. It's a negatively charged particle. Let's just go over the story of how we got here to what we're talking about today, the Bohr model. Our very first model of the atom was the Democritus model, which is just that all things are made up of something indivisible, some indivisible particles called atoms. And then Dalton, with his conclusions from chemistry, came and said that, that all atoms are indivisible, that they are solid, you can't break them down. But he said that different elements have different properties. Oxygen is a different atom to carbon, and that they combine to make carbon dioxide. Thompson model included the electron. So Thompson discovered the electron. He said that electrons would be embedded within a positive mass. So the atom now has a structure. There's something that can be taken out of it. Rutherford's experiment discovered the nucleus and he said that there was a dense positive nucleus and that the electrons must somewhere be orbiting around it. We didn't have an idea that the electrons had some energy and some energy that would keep them in those energy levels. And he didn't have the idea, which is included in the Bohr model, that there are two particles within the nucleus, the protons and the neutrons. Now this is nuclear physics. This whole unit is all about the nucleus. We are not too interested in the energy levels. We're not too interested in the electron shells as they call them in chemistry. We're talking about the nucleus. And most of the energy in the universe is in the nuclei of atoms. And this is the most amazing place. Chemistry does you a disservice because it describes atoms as places that are fixed that can't really change, that there's always going to be the same number of protons and neutrons, that this is a still and calm place. But the nucleus is not like that at all. The nucleus is an incredibly dynamic place with all this energy and all this stuff going on. And that's what I'm gonna to get across to you in this video today, is what is going on inside the nucleus. This is helium, and in the periodic table you'd see a two and a four. And that means it's got two protons and it's also got two neutrons because it's got a mass of four. Now that's the card as you'll see it in the periodic table, but you'll see the notation often like this at the bottom here, four, two, and he. And we can use that to describe nuclear decay as we will in nuclear decay equations in coming videos. You need to be able to get that information from this card or from the notation that looks something like this. There are two protons and two neutrons in a helium nucleus. We're only interested at the minute in the nucleus. Now this is a helium atom. This is a typical helium atom. It's an incredibly stable isotope of helium. This is also a helium atom. It's also a helium atom because it has two protons. Remember the proton number is the atomic number. The proton number, the number of protons, is the thing which decides which element it is. An isotope of an element has the same number of protons but a different number of neutrons. Helium-4 has two protons and two neutrons as an incredibly stable nucleus. It is one of the most stable nuclei that there are. The isotope of helium, helium-5, which has two protons and three neutrons, is actually an unstable nucleus. It doesn't want to be in that arrangement. So why do you think, pause and have a little think, why do you think helium-4 is stable, but helium-5 is not? The answer is about some kind of a balance, some kind of a ratio. It's not a perfectly equal numbers, but is a, some kind of a balance between protons and neutrons which keeps nuclei stable. So we've got this place, we've got this actually exciting and interesting place. I just want to focus on how we describe that before we move on because it's going to be much more useful if you can understand the notation that I have down the bottom here, A, Z and X. So A is the mass number. We often call that the nucleon number in physics. It's the number of protons and neutrons. Z is the proton number. 
is the atomic number in chemistry. We're not too interested in the electrons in this case, but in a neutral atom, then you would have the same number of electrons as you would protons, because protons are positive and electrons are negative. But that's more interesting, more important for chemistry than it is for nuclear physics. Remember, we're talking about the nucleus of these atoms here. So I have three different isotopes of helium, and we're gonna express them in this form, in this notation. Now, we already had the previous one on the previous slide, helium-4. What about helium-3 and helium-5? Pause and see if you can do the notation in this form to show the makeup of these three helium isotopes. So this is helium-3, two protons and one neutron, meaning a mass number of three. This is helium-4, two protons and two neutrons, and this is helium-5, two protons and three neutrons, so a mass of five. We're not interested in electrons at this point, this is just describing the nucleus. Now here's a simulation for from FET, and I'd encourage you to go ahead and have a look at this do this for yourself. This is a really useful simulation for you to see and go to and play about with. It's called Build an Atom by FET Sims. And FET Sims are the best simulations for physics out there. We're going to do this one. We're going to start on this one to build an atom, but there's also ones which will work from a symbol to build an atom. And there's a game to check whether you know it. So I strongly suggest that you just spend a little bit of time having a go at this. The bit I really like about this is it has an indication of whether we've got a stable nuclei or an unstable one. So I'm just going to go ahead and build the helium. It's a helium because it is got two protons. I haven't got any neutrons yet. So it's, it's unstable at the minute because there's an imbalance because we have too many protons. If I put another neutron there, then I have now a stable nucleus. What that means is less likely to decay. Again, I'm not too worried about the electrons, but let's just make it a neutral atom for the sake of it. If I add another neutron, it's even more stable. But if I add more neutrons, all of a sudden it becomes unstable again. So it's not the case that actually having more neutrons makes it stable or unstable. It's about having a balance. If I wanted to stabilize this, then I'd have to add more neutrons. And now I have stable lithium, which is lithium-7. It's lithium-7 because it has a mass number of seven. There are seven nucleons. And, well, I need to add another electron to make it a neutral atom. But again, I'm not worried about that. It's more important for chemistry, the electrons in their orbits. Really, we should be thinking about them as clouds, but we're not going to get into that in GCSE. Moving on again, if we have an imbalance, then we have instability. We have unstable nuclei. It's all about this ratio of protons to neutrons. As you get heavier and heavier and heavier, you do end up needing more neutrons to keep it stable. But if you can understand that, the stability of a nuclei depends upon the ratio of protons to neutrons. There needs to be some kind of balance there. Thanks for the great simulation. Go ahead and do this, play the game, and see if you can work from a card to a number of protons and neutrons, or see if you can work from the period table, or from a diagram, or from the point about nuclear stability is everything is trying to become more stable. An unstable isotope decays to become more stable. An unstable isotope decays to become more stable. Well, why is it? Why, why is one nuclei more or less stable than another? Well, let's just take our simple example. Let's take a helium, first of all. And a helium just made of two protons. What would that be like? Well, those two protons are positive, so they would repel one another. So that would be very unstable because they would spend hardly any time together. It would be a very unstable situation. Now, if I were to add one neutron in between, then the net force of repulsion is actually reduced. And the reason why that is, is that all nucleons are actually attracted to each other as well. Because the neutron is neutral, then it has an attractive force on those protons, as well as them having a repulsive force away from each other. So there is now more stability. It's a more stable situation. Now, if you add a second neutron to that situation and you have two protons and two neutrons, you have a really stable arrangement. And this helium nucleus is one of the most stable arrangements that we can have. This is a really, and I think it's a really good explanation of why we have nuclear stability and why we need a kind of balance. There are arrangements that are more or less stable in nuclei. It is not this still and fixed situation. We have this electrostatic repulsion and we have this other force which is trying to hold those nucleons together and we call it the strong nuclear force. You don't need to particularly talk about that in GCSE. I think it's a useful idea to have. I always imagine it a bit like this. I have protons that are pushing away from each other and then there's this also this force that is trying to hold the thing together. So what's going on in all nuclei is this constant repulsion and attraction. And when they're balanced, that's a very stable situation. But when they're imbalanced, 
then that is an unstable situation. Because the neutrons are not repulsive, all they're doing is attracting the other nucleons. So the neutrons are attracting the protons, but they aren't repulsing the protons. So you have more stability. So you really need to be very good at either working from a card like this or from notation to know exactly how many protons and neutrons there are. So if we have this for example then this is gold, we know there are 79 protons and we know there is 197 minus 79 so 118 neutrons and we could write that notation like this. You won't be given a periodic table to use in the physics exam, you will in a chemistry exam. You might be given part of the periodic table or you might be given a few cards from the period table or you might be given this notation and need to work out the number of protons and number of neutrons there is never a time where, where you will need to look up exactly what the name of something is they will always give you that information in the question if you need it so this is a really simple exercise for you to pause and have a go at you can either start from an isotope name and the number after the isotope name is the mass number or you start from number of protons and number of neutrons and work out some notations the top number, remember, is always the mass number, it's protons plus neutrons, and the bottom number is the proton number. There's a clue in this because the smaller number is always gonna be the number of just protons. The larger number is gonna be protons plus neutrons. So pause now and, and have a go at this simple exercise. Hopefully you got that. It's quite a straightforward one. Check your lines, check them really carefully. When something's straightforward, it's easy to make mistakes. The last thing I want to talk about is the idea of ionization. We often talk about radioactive emissions as being ionizing. And well, what does that actually mean? Ionizing means to change the structure of an atom. It means to make it either positive or negative. And in chemistry, you have to work out what the value of ions are or oxidation states and stuff like that. But in physics, we're more interested in the process that goes involved into ionization. So for example, what could happen is we have an electron which is orbiting down here at a certain low energy level and it absorbs a gamma radiation. So this is a gamma photon, a gamma particle. And we'll come on to exactly what alpha, beta and gamma are in a later video, but this is just some radioactive particle which has hit this atom and the electron has absorbed the energy from it. And so the electron has been raised up and it's been given so much energy that it's actually left the atom. So these are ideas that we're gonna come on to later when we look at what exactly the effects of radioactive emissions are. When we were talking about ionizing radiation in the electromagnetic spectrum, then this is what was going on. Basically, if the electromagnetic radiation has enough energy or a high enough frequency, in other words, it can give electrons enough energy to actually escape the atoms. So what we say is that can kill cells or it can lead to DNA mutation and it can lead to cancer later as well. An unstable isotope decays to become more stable. How does it do that? Well, it either emits alpha, beta, or gamma radiation, and that's for the next video. So to become more stable, it can emit an alpha particle, a beta particle, or a gamma ray. I'll go into detail about what they are in the next video. A key point about radioactive decay is it's random. We can never predict when an individual radioactive nucleus will decay. Radioactive decay is random. That means it only depends on the nucleus. It cannot be influenced by external factors. Lots of detail about nuclear decay in the next video. Unstable isotopes decay to become more stable. So to become more stable, a radioactive isotope can kick out an alpha particle, a beta particle, or a gamma ray. An alpha particle is two protons and two neutrons, a beta particle is a high-speed electron, and a gamma ray is a high-frequency electromagnetic wave. And I have plenty more detail on these in my next video. If that was helpful, don't forget to hit the like button and just comment boom in the comment section below. Thanks very much, and don't forget to subscribe to Gorilla Physics.